Welcome to Sailing Ruby Rose from the 2023 Annapolis Boat Show. Today, we are looking at the Vision 444, another mid 40 foot catamaran. This has got some interesting features on it because the initial design brief was to allow wheelchair access. There's a lot that has followed through into subsequent hulls. Let's go on board and have a really good look, see what you think about this. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Okay, so before we head up to the helm position, I want to kind of talk you through this cockpit. The Vision 444 is interesting because it has side gates the one of the original owners or the original spec for this boat was to give it wheelchair access which means it has these huge side gates that drop down and that means that getting on and off the boat is catchy if you are restricted mobility or just need better access that's a really useful feature cockpit here we've got a really nice wooden table i will be talking to sea wind about a wooden table for our boat really nice cockpit area lots of flexi teeth really nice and warm big up high davit system all integrated there and as we look around we've got a lot of seating there's lots of areas up on the combings here just to kind of to relax on and then we've got a lot of this teak it's also got this starboard side raised helm that gives you a lot of visibility as with all these boats we were checking the visibility from the helm to see is if the raised position the benefits of that outweigh the downsides Okay, so we have this port side helm. We have a nice hard bimini, some really, really big struts there. So this is looks really sound, pretty sturdy. Compass, instruments all in front of us. And then we have those two power winches, those big hark and power winches that you'll find on Ruby Rose 2. Mechanical throttles there and a full set of B&G equipment. Now, let's have a little look. It's raining today and clearly the outboard side gets wet so you do need these side clears that come down. As I sit here, I can see, I can't see any of the corners of the boat. Let me just stand up. I still can't see the corners of the boat. I still can't, I can see none of the four corners of the boat. So I need to step outboard to see the corners. To see, so my visibility is hindered. And also for the whole point about these fly, these fly decks and these fly bridges, it's always about seeing bim seeing like coral heads and things like that. And I do still have, I can't see the water. Like even there's, it's kind of, the visibility for me is a little bit of a problem, but I'm sure that if I was taller, more intelligent, better looking then I could see better. But look, really happy with these winches in front. Everything is tailing back. There are some nice line stowage bins here and here. Also, just want to talk about sail management. Can I see the full mainsail? Yeah, I can see both aspects of that. I can also see the jib, but I can't see the... No, I can just about see the foot of the jib. So again, probably slightly better visibility when it comes to sail management. Um, yeah, so better than Ruby Rose 2. And again, the boom actually is really interesting to know the boom is really high here. The boom has to be high to clear this, which then you also need to think about mainsail footage because obviously the area of that mainsail is what drives the boat. So I kind of think that a 44 foot boat were up so high that we probably drastically reduced the size of that mainsail. We will get the figures down below to compare that, but it'll be interesting to see like how much, uh, how much sail area we have compared to say the C-1370 or the HH. So I think now is a good time to go through some other specifications for the Vision 444. The light ship displacement is nine tons with a further 2.5 tons of payload. So that brings us to about 11.5 tons. As stated, the mainsail area is just shy of 67 square meters. The jib area is 29 square meters. We have an air draft of just shy of 20 meters, which does make it ICW friendly and a draft of 1.15 meters. The base price for this boat is 888,000 US dollars. They are up to hull number 38 and the lead time at the moment is February 2026. So follow us down the side deck. We have a ridiculously wide side deck here. As I said, this was originally designed for wheelchair access, so there is a huge amount of space here. Incredible amount of storage in those lockers. Again, very reminiscent of the Seawind 1370. Storage, storage, storage. A windlass there, flush mounted hatches. Again, if this is wheelchair friendly or the, the, the accessibility options will require uh, flush mounted hatches 
There's actually a really nice non-skid finish, a look at a spongy kind of artificial teak on here. That's really nice. Small trampolines and again, all the, all the functionality you've got there for sale. The jib there. Interestingly enough, a straight jib track. They've got the boom, the kind of Park Avenue boom thing that we have. So there's some brackets there to make the flaking a little bit easier. There are some nice touches here. Obviously attachment points here. But there's a full size handrail there. And these lovely little stainless steel points, which actually obviously stop chafing and stop you damaging your fiberglass. There are some really nice features. The little points I also want to point out, line stowage, lines all run back to the cockpit. Again, some people want captive line stowage. For us, it was never a problem, but again, we like having the captive stuff. It does reduce dirt getting into the lines. It reduces, um, obviously, UV damage to those lines as well. So again, that's a nice, nice setup. Could have been a little bit cleaner, but that's what we've got. So let's look at the saloon. We have these big powder coated doors. This obviously all closes over to so the door, closes over there. And we've got this big opening rear facing window, reminiscent of the Seawind 1600 that has those areas that open. This then opens into a really spacious saloon. I think probably got 6366 of headroom here. So it's much higher than Ruby Rose 2. Galley is aft facing. I like this. The, the work surfaces are super solid, super high quality. So I think really what I would say, I can see the, the quality of build that's gone into this. So as we're looking at all these boats, I'm very impressed with the just the sturdiness of everything that's there. Something which we don't have on River Rose 2, we have upper pantry, which gives us a lot of stowage. And there's a lot of stowage around here. So we've got lots of under cabinet stowage two burner two burner gas there probably with the amount of solar the amount of lithium installing uh, uh, an induction wouldn't be an issue i like this moving forward you have what can i show you here uh double fridge double freezer we actually have exactly these units on ruby rose 2 we've got the big fridge and then we have the big double freezer they're just in different places so the similar amount of cold storage and we've got this nice little area with this funky coffee machine. I'll be asking about that because I do like coffee on boats. And then we've got these kind of like bookshelves. I kind of think that obviously one thing that Teresa is going to be nodding vigorously about is the amount of ventilation that comes through there. Personally, I would want more ventilation. It's not beyond the word of man to make those safari windows. So maybe that could be something that's optioned. There are obviously two opening hatches here and those are forward facing. So yeah, the ventilation thing you're going to get ventilation from up there. Probably not wise to have those open while you're under sail though. So again, something to be considerate of. Large C-shaped dinette. So we've got, uh, again, everything aft facing. Drop down table. I actually really like the wood finish that that's in. And again, that will turn into a day bed. So there's a lot of functionality. And as we talk about with all these catamarans, multiple areas of functionality is really something that's important. If you have a family on board, you want an off watch to be out of sleep there. So it's, it's pretty nice. Anyway, nav station, something that I do want to show you. Full set of BNG electronics, water maker, everything at my fingertips yeah really nice place to be yeah and actually yeah nice Korean nice mineral nav desk there I like it this has been expanded in future hull so newer iterations of this boat have a slightly longer nav desk visibility is great there is a big blind spot on that port bow though so I can't see that just because of the just the the area around the mast compression post but it yeah, like a place to it is a very watch, yeah, it's a very nice it's a very nice place to keep watch. So yeah. yeah, I'd be very happy with this on watch on long passage, maybe a little backrest there. But again, it's a really really nice area. Yeah. But let's go down to see the hulls because these are super interesting. So here we are in the starboard hull. This is the master hull, and the first thing that I notice is that the width is really generous. Now I don't know whether the hulls themselves are actually wider or whether there's just like less cabinetry but I will find that out but nonetheless the actual space in this hull is huge. This is obviously the bed. It's a really generous bed. It is a one of those beds that you have to kind of climb into. You don't have access on either side. However 
I mean, it's not particularly high, so I think that climbing into this bed wouldn't present a problem for most people. And actually, something that was pointed out to me that I didn't actually consider before now, but it was pointed out to me a couple of days ago, is that the beds such as ours, where you actually have to climb up to them, uh, sometimes that is an issue for people uh, with uh, kind of less mobility. It's not as easy to climb up into a bed, even if you do have access on either side. All right, so let's talk about ventilation. You know that that's what I love to talk about. This is, I'm assuming, yes. That's a really nice big opening hatch there. There's an opening hatch behind us. There's an opening hatch right there. There's another opening hatch on the side, up above, and several um, in the actual heads themselves. So there are opening hatches galore. And importantly, these hatches open so that they're facing forward. So when you have a hatch like that, it acts like a wind scoop. It scoops the wind into wherever it is that you are. So even though this is an aft cabin, and aft cabins can sometimes be, kind of have less exposure to the breeze, I think that you would actually get really good ventilation out of this cabin. So big thumbs up from me on that front. Storage is obviously a little compromised in this cabin compared to some other models that we've seen. The Balance 442 speaks to mind. But let's have a quick look at the storage that we do have. So you've got these cupboards here. There's obviously some uh, drawers and shelves in there. So, I mean, for some people that might not be enough, but I think for most sailors, you know, you don't want to be carrying too much anyway because you want to be thinking about weight. Um, yeah, nice little bench here. You've got a little bit of extra storage up above here. And then let's go into the heads. Oh, some extra storage here, what's... Yep, so it's just some hanging uh, lockers here. This is the heads, so as you can see, there is actually a door when Nick's standing there, so you can get some privacy. And what I didn't say is that there is a sliding door to this entire um, hull, so you can kind of block it off so that you've got privacy in this entire hull, which is really nice. Uh, more storage in these cupboards here. Yes, wow, there's actually loads of storage in there. Babe, do you want to get a shot of that? And then you've just got the usual suspects. You've got a sink, um, hatch for ventilation here, heads, shower, nice big shower. Ordinarily, obviously, that door would be closed. You've got a huge shower with a seat. I won't actually sit down. And then you have a workshop, workroom, storage area for all of your tools and whatnot got a vice here um, really nice storage actually with netting to hold everything in uh, this is really nicely organized uh, as Nick I'm sure would say there is nowhere to sit down so you can't actually sit and work here you would have to it's really more of a storage room I would say yeah. despite the vice being there so yeah that's probably just one consideration but one thing that we do like about the uh, boats that we're seeing at the moment, the cameras we're seeing at the moment, is this trend for workshops on board, to put like dedicated purpose-built workshops, um, or at the very least kind of storage areas for all your tools and spares and whatnot. So that's something that four or five years ago we were seeing a lot less of, and now it seems that we're seeing a lot more of it. So that, I mean, that's us. Awesome. That, Nick loves that. Okay. Let's go into the porthole. So this is the aft cabin in the porthole. It is set up as a cabin at the moment, so I'll go through the cabin aspect of it and then Nick will talk about the engine bay, which is actually located underneath this bed. So this bed is very similar to the bed in the master hull. Um, you've obviously got the heads here, so we'll look in there in a moment. But in terms of the bed itself, I know that I'm not meant to be sitting on these beds, sorry. We've got a nice, huge opening hatch up above. I think that's the owner there, if you can see him through the window. We've got a little hatch aft just opening into kind of the cockpit area. And you've got another hatch on this side. So those hatches together will give you plenty of airflow, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. Uh, in terms of storage, we've got a cupboard here. Is that storage or is that something else? Yep some shelves in there, another couple of cupboards here, and then we'll go into the heads now. Okay, so let's have a look at the bed in um, engine bay mode. That's fine. We've got this big, it looks like a Yamaha 57. So again, there's a lot of access, a lot of kind of like ability to get to your, to your filters and everything else, but that door is too narrow to get this engine out. And I don't know how you get the engine out if ever you needed to re-engine. That's an interesting point because I think that that is, yeah, so 
the door frame is too narrow to get the engine out and the hatch is too small to get the engine through so you would have to do a lot of work to get that engine out and so there is something to be said again if you're a vision owner let me know exactly if that engine will pass through that hatch i don't think it will one feature of this boat is that all the plant machinery is held behind closed doors these very nice very clean lockers so again access if you are the sort of person as the owner is here that wants to see and look at everything on a daily basis this gives you all that access and at eye level so yeah really well set out really nice kind of install of plant machinery there moving forward okay moving forward we have the i'm assuming third cabin this would be probably my first choice for a, uh, a guest cabin really big really airy huge amount of headroom um in like while you're actually sat up in bed itself hatch up above two hatches up above actually you've got some storage underneath the bed very similar to the storage on Ruby Rose 2. In fact, this entire cabin is quite similar. You've got some USB charging points next to the bed. Um, you've got some lights next to the bed. So a fan, covers on this side as well. So some extra storage here. Once again, plenty of um, width. So loads of space to walk around. This is in contrast to the Balance 442. And forward, we have uh, the guest heads. So shower, big shower room, which you can sit down at, uh, heads, sink, um, a cabinet. You've got an opening hatch, which is good. Good for ventilation when you're having a shower. And that's really all there is to say, I think, about these heads. So what did you think? She is an amazing boat. And actually a lot of that disability access, the accessibility really does work for able-bodied as well as disabled people. Wow, super windy here. Anyway, before I end up in the drink, drink? Oh, before I end up in the water, uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Tell us what you think of these boats. And actually now that we're kind of like NRC Win 1370, we're doing a lot of comparative analysis on what we believe is also on the market in the mid 40 foots. Anyway, we'll see you again next week. Take care, goodbye.